Hey and welcome to another video. If you are new here, my name is Marcin and I'm professional Photoshop retoucher and here on YouTube I give you some Photoshop tips. This is the image we will be working on and today I'm going to show you how to get from here to here. Using frequency separation and patch tool we will be able to solve skin imperfections, light imperfections and color imperfections, all of this on the skin as you can see on the top of the forehead here under the eyes we have some imperfections and with few simple steps I am going to show you how to solve this. So this is part of my premium course, more information in the description and this is one of the steps a uh, whole image after retouch looks more like this. This is image before, this is after and one of the steps is the one that I am going to show you right now. So I am going to remove this group that I have here and show you how I work with frequency separation on this image. First of all, we need to create the proper layers. So I have one cleanup layer already here and we need to create two layers because frequency separation is of course based on two layers on one we have mainly information about the color on the other one we have mainly information about the texture not 100% but for example um 90% of the texture 10% of the color so First, I'm going to create a stamp final layer on the top. So I'm pressing Command, Option, Shift and E to create this on MacBook. If you work on the Windows device, that will be Control, Alt, Shift and E. I'm going to name this as the low and then duplicate by pressing Command or Control, NJ and the other layer will be named as high. I'm going to remove the color from here first. So we have two layers and on these two layers we are going to keep slightly different information. So first is the low. What we need to do here, we need to blur this out. So blur out the texture. So I'm going to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm going to set this up rather low and the point is no matter which size you have you're going up and you stop at the point where the fine details are blurred out. So for this image will be somewhere 13, 15, I can't see many of the details. So I'm going to hit OK and now high layer and I am going to image in this this time and I will try to extract mainly the texture information then apply image and the layer as the source will be low blending because it's 16 bit image will be add scale to offset zero and this box invert will be checked Apparently when you work with 8-bit image, the blending will be subtract and this won't be checked and offset will be 1 to 8. So this is something to remember, but of course you have this video as the support every single time when you need to work with this. So now I am going to hit OK and then I am going to change blending mode from normal to linear light. And now my image will be looking as the image before. I am going to press shift, select these two layers, name this F, S, and this is the frequency separation. So how I work now, let's zoom in and we have some color disproportions here. I am starting with this low layer and we need to work on the actual layer. So I am choosing the patch tool and when we have this sort of unpleasant light, we just make selection with the patch tool and try to blend it with other color. As you can see, very simple and of course, very powerful 
um, to work on the image. Frequency separation is very controversial and I must agree with the fact it's often overused. It's not perfect and for sure it's not professional technique to work with. But I also don't agree with people who try to tell you never use it because sometimes it is actually helpful and you can work in the way that the distraction of the image by working with frequency separation will not be noticeable. So I think it's actually worth. And some more here. So this is the first step working with frequency separation with this small light disproportion. And we get really nice results. Also, as you can see, I have some of the shadows here. Very simple. Uh, of course, it's also possible with Dutch and Burn we can solve this, but when we mix these two techniques, it's a little bit less to do later, a little bit more here maybe we can do. And as you can see, this is the major part I wanted to show you. What I like to do as well is creating the layer in between. I am going to name this, let's keep it layer one. And then I am choosing clone stamp. And as you know, we are uh, we were working on the actual layer before, but now you want to work on the layer current below and you want to use soft edged brush for this. So I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger and this is also really powerful because it will help you to solve some shadows disproportion on the image. So I can go with the clone stamp and fix such an areas as bugs under the eyes, some really uh, harsh transitions on the skin. You need to know you don't try to solve any contours by this. You don't try to solve any natural shadows by this because you might destroy the image. But the things that are not perfect on this image, uh, for, for, for those things, and uh, this technique and using clone stamp in this case will be really powerful. And we can see right now after this small cleanup, before and after. Really powerful, simple to use, um, sometimes time taking, but of course when you do it, it might be speed up. If you have my courses, you also have the actions uh, where you can quickly play frequency separation and it's absolutely the best action available, best action pack available. If you want to find a little bit more information, check the links in the description where you can get the full six hours course. Also, remember to follow me on Instagram to find some inspiration or check out what am I up to. Thank you for watching and I am going to see you in the next video. Thank you.